Welcome back everybody to the Law of Trusts. In this lesson we are moving on to the next of our major topics. Focusing on this idea of the creation of the express trust, talking about how they're made and the general requirements that are that are necessary for them to be valid or to be sufficient. And this involves having a conversation at great detail and in great length, which is what we're going to do, about the idea of the three certainties. The three certainties all have to be present in order for the creation of an express trust to actually be valid. So essentially, we're going to be spending a lot of time looking at what the three th certainties are, what it means to essentially uh, sufficiently meet the three certainties, and then to talk about how we apply the three certainties in the application of, for example, the fixed trust versus, uh, for example, the discretionary trust. But this lesson is going to take something of an introduction to the idea of the three certainties and we'll talk about those other things in more detail as we go on throughout the lessons. So, what are the three certainties? Essentially, we know already that the creation of a trust will involve the splitting of legal and equitable title um, or equitable title to property uh, and then distributing those rights accordingly. You distribute those rights in the sense of you distribute the legal title to the trustee and then you distribute the equitable title to that of the beneficiary and then you have the fiduciary relationship which exists between the trustee and the beneficiary. Now, the idea of and the process of doing so requires quite a few steps in order to essentially create a valid trust instrument. Of course, you have to make sure that legal title is actually properly transferred, which is something that we're going to get to in the fourth topic, which is talks, uh, talks about the constitution of a trust. But then we have to think about the formalities that are required for the creation of a trust, the three certainties. And in the creation of an equitable right in property, we know that the equitable right exists with the beneficiaries and the legal rights exist with the trustee. And so in doing so, what the settler or testator has done in an express trust um, is essentially done something which is expressly creating an instrument which exists in the nature of, uh, of a trust. It exists in this kind of way. And they must do so by adhering to a number of certainties. So for example, it must be shown that the settler had actually intended to create a trust in the first place. It also has to be shown what exactly is going to be put on trust and that this is clearly identifiable. And then finally, the settler has to be very clear in identifying who will be the beneficiary of the trust. And these are essentially the three certainties, okay? And these three certainties exist in this way. You have the certainty of intention, you have the certainty of objects, and you have the certainty of subject matter. Ordinarily, you would put subject matter second, and that's how we're going to be describing it in, um, in, this, in this lesson. So, certainty of intention, very clear. Is it obvious, and it is, is it certain that the person who is putting this property on trust intends to create a trust? Or are they just simply creating um, something which may be a gift? Or are they just lending the property for a uh, specific duration of time, at which point they want to have that property back? So that's what the certainty of intention tells us. The certainty of subject matter is uh, easy to understand as well, because it is asking us, what is the subject matter? What are the things that we are putting on trust? And are we clearly able to define what they are? OK, we can't use sort of nebulous, abstract concepts to define what the certainty of subject matter is. So as a result of which, the certainty of subject matter is also very important, clearly delimiting what is and what isn't the property in question. And then finally, the certainty of objects, which is also clearly delineating who is and who isn't the beneficiary of the trust. And one of the most landmark cases which establishes these three certainties is the case of Knight and Knight from 1840. In this case, the settler had left his estates to his brother, um, and then his brother then left them to his son. Okay, I'm not going to start naming what the estates are and who the people are, because it gets very, very complicated in terms of these very old-timey languages and the, the ways in which these trust instruments were created in the 1840s. So you have a testator, who is obviously um, the, uh, somebody who has died, who, who leaves the estates to his brother, and then his brother has that property, who then leaves them to his son. 
it was clear from the will of the original testator, the original individual who had placed the estates in the hands of his brother, that the estates he be passed to the descendant um, in the direct male line of the grand, of the testator's grandfather. And so when the son died in testate, i.e. died without a will, the brother would settle the estates not in line with the terms of the will. And this is really where we see the creation of some kind of legal uncertainty um, uh, start to crop up and why we have a case. Now, the question, one of the questions that was um, made um, was this idea of the creation of the trust. Was this a trust and was there therefore an obligation on the part of the person who was receiving the legal title to execute the will and to execute the trust in a way as stated in the manner that they wanted it to be done? And Lord Langdale held that the wording of the will was not sufficiently certain to justify the creation of a trust. And so as a result of which, the, the estate was held to be an absolute gift rather than a trust that had to be held on, uh, on the basis of some kind of, or for some kind of beneficiary. And so the legal test which was formulated to determine whether or not a trust existed and not just an absolute gift, for example, was the three certainties test as defined earlier on.